Oftentimes when I'm posting content to YouTube, I have a lot of you guys in the comment sections asking me about my weak ores that I have for different like cast bars from different mobs in different dungeons, Halls of Valor, Court of Stars, Algothar Academy. I have these weak ore packages set up for every single dungeon and I actually typically make them myself. So today in this video, I'm gonna walk through how I set them up, kind of just using Court of Stars as an example to teach you guys how to make these weak ores for yourself. At the end, I will go over how you can also obtain the ones that I currently have. Long story short, they're available for my Patreon supporters and Twitch subs in my Discord. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. Anyways, let's jump into the video. All right, so this part of the video is gonna be fairly unscripted. I actually was pretty much done editing this video and I had a YouTube comment pop up that was talking about one of these old videos that I did that my mouse movement was super spastic or whatever. It was like giving them a seizure. I'm trying not to do that, but I went back and I was watching this video as it was uploading and holy shit was my mouse movement crazy. So I'm gonna try to really stabilize it here. Anyways, I wanna talk about what my normal package looks like. Really quick, what I'm really referring to is my package that looks like this. This is my cast weak ore package that I use for this dungeon specifically. What it does is it'll, you know, dynamically populate this weak ore section as these casts are popping up. I have some being highlighted. I have the icon IDs as well as like the cast times for each thing. And I'm gonna walk through basically how to start setting up a package like this. And I'll provide you guys with at least a template in the description below. I'm gonna try to figure out how to upload it to Wago. But I'm gonna try to kind of speed through this because I don't wanna waste too much time. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, I hope this is fairly helpful. So three things that I recommend having for setting up weak aura package. First, you're going to need an add-on called weak auras, uh, kind of naturally implied there. You also need an add-on called ID tip. This is an add-on, very lightweight, that basically will just tell you what the spell ID and the icon ID is for each spell in the game. This is super helpful for making weak auras because it doesn't require you to use like a tertiary site like Wowhead. It allows you to do basically everything in game. And naturally, the last thing I would recommend is Mythic Dungeon Tools. This is going to allow you to actually see each individual mob and pull the ID right from that add-on. Weak ores and Mythic Dungeon Tools is something you should probably already naturally have. But just in case you don't have ID tip, I'm going to have all three of those linked in the description below. The big thing is in Court of Stars, I want to show off how to track certain spells from like the construct here on the charge smash. Maybe these guards frontal quilling strikes, and the bound energies charge blast. And we're going to put that all into a weak aura that's going to dynamically populate and show you the casts that are going off with timers. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. First things first, let's start by going into our weak auras and hitting new aura. Now from here, we have a few different options. We can go into pre-made auras, but I think for this, we're actually just gonna start with a progress bar. There's a lot of other ways to do this, but I find the progress bar to be nice and clean and pretty reliable. Let's name this Quilling Strike Cast. And then there's three main tabs that we're gonna be using here. We're gonna use display, we're gonna use trigger, and we're gonna use load. Let's quickly start with load. And I, what we're basically doing with this tab is we wanna make sure it's loading in this dungeon only. So what we're gonna do is first by marking in combat, and then we're gonna scroll down to where it says zone ID. And luckily for us, Weak Ores is this cool little thing where it actually shows you all of the different IDs for each of the dungeons that are popular currently in this season. So we're currently in Court of Stars, but it's also gonna show us all the other Dragonfly dungeons, the raid, as well as Mythic Plus dungeons. Sometimes the ID does change a little bit, but for the most part, not. So we can see that it's G252. So by clicking here and then going over to the zone ID, we can type in G252. And now this is all set up. This at this weak ore will always load while you're in combat in the Court of Stars dungeon. Okay, so let's go to trigger. We basically want this weak ore to track the mobs that are in the pool and a specific cast that they're going to be casting. Here's how we do that. So this, as a just a basic weak ore, it's only gonna provide you with one trigger. Everything else is pretty much set up, but we have to put in a couple of things here. So first we wanna change the type from aura to player slash unit info. And this is telling the weak aura to grab, you know, from a player or unit information. Then instead of having it health, which auto populates, we want to change this to cast. And then lastly, we want to change the unit from player to nameplate. And what this is basically doing 
It's, it's it, any nameplate that is on your screen currently, if it's casting the spell that we tell it to, it's going to have the weak aura pop up. And then last but not least, we want to make sure that we're putting in the spell ID. You can also use legacy spell name and simply type in Quelling Strike. But I find that if you can get access to the actual spell ID, it's just going to be more accurate. So for that, we're going to actually go spell and exact spell match. And the way that we're going to find this is by going into Mythic Dungeon Tools. In our Mythic Dungeon Tools add-on, we can find a guard, right click on them, and we can see Quelling Strike. And if we hover over that with the add-on ID tip, we can actually just pull the spell ID. So it's 209. 027. So let's open back up weak ores. In here we can go 209027. Sorry, you can't see that. And then we're going to hit OK. You typically know if it works is if this little icon pops up. It's going to be the icon of the spell that we're looking for. And now we just want to make sure it works. So let's pull a single guard here and make sure that when he does cast that quelling strike, it's going to show this red bar. There it is. It's right in the middle of our screen. It's kind of hard to see. It's under our current Brewmaster Weak Aura. I just want to have him cast it one more time to make sure it's working. And there it is. Perfect. So let's get out of combat here. Open this back up. And now it's time to edit the display. So first things first, I don't like how the bar looks. So if you click on the bar, you can see that it's like this really ugly, it almost looks uh, cylindrical, kind of improper gradient. And that's going to come from the bar texture. So let's change this to clean. You can, of course, use any template you want or any bar texture you want, but I really like how the clean looks. You can add a gradient if you want. This helps with like kind of the visual, um, like peripheral view. If you do enable a gradient, you know that when the bar is like yellow, for example, or like green, you're safe for a second. And as it approaches that red, you know that you need to move. But I'm going to leave gradient off. And then lastly, we can show icon. Now the icon unfortunately will not read right away. So you need to actually add a fallback icon here. And the best way to do that is just like before, we're gonna go into our mythic dungeon tools. We're gonna grab the spell ID here, 135734, 135734. And now we can see that that icon is on the right-hand side. I'm gonna change this to left. And I'm also gonna change the zoom to 30%. And what that is gonna do is it's gonna make the weak aura nice and sharp with those corners squared off instead of kind of having that like typical kind of a round round edge that you know blizzard's known for having and last but not least this weak aura is kind of small so i want to make it a little bit bigger let's bump this up to like 250 width and then i want to make the height let's go with 25 you know you can always make it bigger um you can make it really tall if you want to but i find that just ends up covering up most of your screen. So let's go with 25. I think 25 is a good height. And then I want to make sure that the offset are, is going to be zero, zero. And the reason for that is because we're going to end up putting this into a folder and moving everything, you know, at once. So now with our weak aura set up, I think we're feeling pretty good about it. The last thing I want to do is I actually want to go back up and I want to change the bar color. And this is just a personal thing that I like to do, but I like to make it kind of match the, um, the color of the spell that's being casted. And Quilling Strike kind of has like a purplish pink glow to it. So we're going to leave it like this. All right. So one last time, let's just make sure that it works. So we're going to pull a guard up here with Provoke. And I'm going to wait for this cast to go. Now, once again, it's probably going to clip underneath my weak aura, but that's okay. So there's the Quilling Strike. And I think it's looking pretty good. Here's how we're going to make it auto populate multiple casts. We're going to go back into our weak aura tab. We're going to hit new aura. We're going to go down to dynamic group. We're going to click on this and let's name this COS. And then I'm going to just do DG for dynamic group. It's only because I'm going to keep it simple for the video. Now we want to drag this quelling strike cast into the COS folder. And now that it's in here, we can now move this group around as we please by clicking on the group and just dragging this up in the weak aura interface, we're going to come down and we're going to just make sure that it's nice and centered on the X axis. So it is centered on zero. It's about 220. Let's lower this a little bit. So it's closer to our character at 180. And we're looking pretty good. Now it's super nice about once you set up one bar, you can actually just duplicate this by right clicking, hitting duplicate. And now it's quelling strike cast two. we want to change this to a different cast. For this next poll, the thing that we want to look out for is called charged blast. 
So we're going to change this to Charge Blast Cast. We're going to change this to like a nice kind of dark purple to kind of differentiate this between Quelling Strike. Something else I'd like to do is in our display tab for this. So we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're actually going to add a glow to this. And the reason for that is because I think it's another way to differentiate Quelling Strike to Charge Blast. But also when we have a glow going, uh, visually, we now recognize that maybe it's a more important cast. Like that's maybe a cast that's a little bit more important on the priority list to look out for or to stun. And then we're going to, I, I like the pixel glow actually. So we can come in and edit this a little bit. Let's go to extra options. We can add maybe a few more lines. Um, we can maybe make the length of those lines a little bit bigger. Uh, and you can like change the thickness. You can actually use a custom color if you like. White's kind of good. Um, you can make it a lighter purple. Um, you can make it red, you know, you can kind of play around with this, but let's keep it at the white. Just it's easier to see on the on, contrasting on the dark purple. But we can't forget to change the trigger for it, or it's just going to also, you know, register that it's a quelling strike. So we're going to go back to trigger. We're going to scroll back up to the top here, and we're going to need to grab that ID again. We can do that from MDT. So in MDT, we can see that it's 212031. Again, you can also do the legacy spell name, but it really depends on what language you play in. You might have to actually change the name from Charge Blast to something else. All right, so that's set up. So let's test if this works. This is a really good example because there's two guards and two bound energies. So let's pull these groups here and let's see how it pops up. So we see one Charge Blast and then we see the Quelling Strikes. So now we know what to look out for. Now again, we can reposition this, we can make the entire weak or package bigger or smaller, but what I like about setting it up like this is now I know when to, to strike, when to when I need to leg sweep. You typically wanna wait for all the casts to be happening at once and then you can kind of snapshot it. So instead of having to stare at these nameplates, we can just wait for a leg sweep here on the four, we leg sweep, we stun everything and we're, we're looking good. Once again, we can kind of just dance around now and we're vibing. So again, there's a charge blast, charge blast, quelling. Now we can ring of peace. So just like that, it's a very easy way to control and to not have to like read each individual nameplate. Now, the last thing we are gonna wanna add is the charged smash. Again, we can duplicate. We wanna come to the trigger. Let's start with that first. Once again, we're gonna open up MDT. We're gonna come to the construct. We're going to grab the spell ID here. We can see that it is 209495. Hit enter. And then we want to come to the display and we want to make sure that we're changing the, the icon as well. So it's 651088. And then similar to the other abilities, I kind of want to change the bar color. Uh, for this ability specifically, I like to have it white. And the reason I like to have it white is because the spell to me, like this is how I kind of related in my brain is the kind of the animation when it's on the ground is like whitish purple, like a very light purple. So when it when I see the white bar, I know that this charge smash is coming out. I'm going to come down here, though, and I want to actually change the glow to something else, maybe a different color, because it's a little this it's hard to see the white on white. So let's change it to like pink again, kind of like contrast, fairly subtle, maybe a maybe a red. And then what's really cool is you can also come here and you can actually go to actions. And if we scroll all the way up in actions, there's on show and on hide. Basically, the difference between these two is when the weak aura pops up for the first time, it's going to, that's what this information means. It's going to play a sound. It's going to have a glow. It's going to have a chat message, or you can have it on hide. So when the weak aura actually disappears, this is typically like when a, a certain cast goes off and when it finishes, that player has a debuff. So this might be good later in the dungeon on something like Shadow Slash, but for the on show, we want to make sure that our group is aware that the frontal is being targeted at us. So we want to have a direct message that's being said or yelled that just says frontal on me or watch out. So we can click chat message. We go to message type. I prefer to have yell, but you can also do say. You can also have just like blizzard party. You can also have it like prioritize. So it'll say like it'll read if you're in like a battle group, a raid, then a party, then a say. Uh, but in this case, let's do yell. And let's have this yell, potato pancakes. Now, whenever the charge smash is casted on us, it's going to yell potato pancakes. 
So let's go check out a poll that has all three of those mobs in it, and let's make sure that the weak aura works. This poll right before Captain Grudo's area is where these mobs all reside. There's a poll with a construct, a guard, and an unbound energy. So let's get a provoke here. Let's hope I don't kill him. And it's probably going to be a quelling strike first, followed by a charge blast, followed by a suppression. So there's the charge blast. There's the quelling strike. And then shortly after, we might see a suppress. Or we're going to just see the charge smash. So there, it's yelling potato pancakes. Very easy. We dodge a quelling strike. So instead of having to like read and follow each of these nameplates once again, all we have to do is simply sidestep. There's a charge blast with a quill again. Now we know we can leg sweep. And here comes another charge smash. So once again, it's going to yell out potato pancakes on me. And we are set. Now, again, we want to be a little bit more serious. We're going to change this to... Let's just change this to watch out. Double exclamation point. And that pretty much does it. That sets up the start of our weak aura package. It's looking pretty good. The last thing I would say is you can actually change how the group grows. So instead of growing down, we want it to grow up. And the reason for that is because then we can set a baseline. Uh, the, the baseline cast will start here and grow up instead of starting here and growing down. Because if it grows down, if there's enough casts in the pool, it's gonna cover your character, then you might not see where you're standing and it's gonna get you killed. So you, if the weak aura is ever above your head, you want it to grow up instead of down. So last but not least, let's kind of get this in the right position here. Let's come down and let's make sure that the X offset is still zero. It looks like it is. And then last but not least, we can always change the scale of this, but instead of having to go through and change each individual, you know, cast bar, we can actually come in here and just change the scale to maybe like 0.8. Maybe we'll go 0.85. And I think that's an appropriate size now. So here's another pull with potentially two casts, and we're going to see how it's going to grow up. So there's the quell, there's the charge blast, we know to leg sweep. All right, and that pretty much does it. That's how you start making these. Once again, for the rest of the dungeon, you can simply just kind of come into weak auras, and you can just duplicate the cast. The last thing I do want to mention, um, you can change the order of how these appear by dragging these up and down in the weak or act like the dynamic group But we're gonna just keep them in the same order But I hope that helps I hope that guide helps a little bit I Have always been pretty bad at weak auras and something that I always wanted to learn Especially at the end of Shadowlands is I want to start learning how to make my own weak auras to help assist in dungeons That's a very powerful tool if you can utilize it properly so I hope this guide at least maybe helped you get started on creating these for yourself. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And per usual, I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.